Welcome to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where you can learn and be inspired by real-world examples of how technology is transforming businesses and reshaping industries in a language everyone can understand. Here is your host, Neil C. Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, and I'm quite excited about today's interview. And let me tell you why, because it's because... I've got the CEO of Owl Labs on the show today. And they're a software-led hardware company that are paving the way for the future of remote work. And the company's product include Meeting Owl. And that uses emerging technology, such as AI, to bring teams together for better work. And while focused on its core hardware, the company is developing advanced software technology to completely reinvent the conference room ecosystem and make it smart. And anybody that's had to walk in a meeting room or a conference room and spend 10 minutes just trying to get the technology to work will know all about the frustrations that need to be overcome there. Wouldn't it be great just to walk in and just have your meeting seamlessly start without any hassle? It's one of the things I still get flashbacks about now. And one of the other reasons I'm excited to get him on the show today is because I have an owl with me. I'm holding it in my hands as I speak to you. And it does look incredibly cool. But how does it work in my office? And how will it work in your office or conference room? That's what we're going to find out today. So remember that scene in Stephen King's Christine where he looks at the car and says, show me, as the car starts to rebuild itself. Well, I'm now looking at my meeting owl and saying, okay, show me. (laughs) So let's find out more on today's podcast. So a massive warm welcome to the show, Frank. Can you tell the listeners a little bit more about who you are and what you do? Well, first, thanks for having me, Neil. So I'm Frank Weishaupt, and I'm CEO of Owl Labs. Uh, Owl Labs, at its core, is a video collaboration company. Our founders are roboticists who set out to build video conferencing hardware and software tools to make meetings more productive and to dramatically improve the remote user experience. Now, I think most people listening will have experienced a few problems with video conferencing. And indeed, any meeting, it seems that you walk into the meeting room, it takes you 10 minutes to get everything set up. And there's always a tech problem somewhere. But I'm curious, what are some of the biggest pain points of video conferencing that you've seen remote workers experiencing? I think, I think you hit it right on the head. There is a, a minimum 10-minute meeting tax to getting a meeting started, certainly when you include video uh, it's the number one issue that we hear about uh, from you know people that are coming to us and looking for a solution. And, and it's ironic when you think about it because we've gotten so used to intuitive tech at the home. Uh, it is easy to buy an iPhone and get your iPhone set up. Uh, you can now buy uh, doorbells that provide video uh, in real time uh, for you to be able to view and judge the security of your home. But yet, Uh, We really haven't demanded that in the office. And so the setup piece is the biggest piece. There's too many wires. There's too many failure points. And, you know, there is also a tremendous lack of training um, because people just don't really put their mind share towards training to use the tools that uh, are necessary to, to run an average ordinary meeting. And it seems to me as someone that's making his living from a computer and he's completely location agnostic, I always joke with my wife, I just need a a computer and a Wi-Fi connection. This is exactly how it should be. But again, I'm curious, are big corporations finally waking up to the fact that a location should not matter for their workforce? Yeah, I think from our experience, it, it's it's quite a bit mixed, right? Our customer base is uh, all over the board. So uh, we do have some customers that are Fortune 100, uh, you know, uh, well-established companies. Uh, we do very well with startups and, you know, we do very well in the education space. There's no one particular sector that, um, that dominates our customer base. But, you know, I would say that there, there is, you know, definitely um, uh, a mindset within, you know, younger, uh, younger companies, uh, startup companies, uh, to you know, adopt video in a way where they are able to extend the pond of which they're able to recruit and also you know, make their workers as productive as possible. But 
you know, again, going back to our customer base, it's anywhere from Nike and Sony to Zappos to SoulCycle to Harvard. It's, you know, it's, it's quite a big mix. And I think you're starting to see people wake up to the fact that they need to start thinking about how they plan and uh, make their workers as productive as possible. But, um, but it's a process. And from those big mix of businesses you, you're working with there, are business leaders getting over their historic trust issues with remote working? And do you think there will be a rise in acceptance of remote work in 2020? Because it feels like it's just the natural next step. It does. I, I think it's it's actually a great question because I think the onus in that case, uh, in, in that question, seems to fall on the burden falls on the uh, remote worker, right? Needing to prove something more, needing to prove uh, that they are as productive as possible. When really uh, the, the failure comes in creating a culture of accountability and also doing planning for your remote workers, right? If you have a culture of accountability where uh, people have clear and established goals and, um, and you have regular one-on-ones, uh, really does it matter whether the person is sitting next to you or the person is sitting 3,000 miles away from you? It's kind of it's kind of archaic to think that way, to be honest yeah. with you. But, and I think, you know, when you, when you start to think about it, as we get towards the end of 2019 here, uh, many executives will start their 2020 planning process. But, you know, they won't plan for remote workers, right? They won't think about the tools necessary to make them successful. But, you know, we're a Boston-based company. If we were to decide to open an office in Chicago, uh, of course, we would think about, uh, what we need to put in that office to make sure that the employees feel like they're in a good environment where they can be productive. Yet most executives don't think about their remote workers in the same way. And we, you know, we are in a position where you know we can we can speak to it because we live it. So about fifty percent of our employees are uh, here in Boston, and, and the other fifty percent are distributed throughout the world. So we get to see what a lot of those challenges are. And, you know, we set up a culture of accountability to where, you know, we are very reliant on those employees as reliant and as trusting as those people that are sitting in the office. Uh, so it does seem that the stage is set and it's inevitable that remote work will increase. And something else that really fascinates me is, of course, we've got the big businesses that are a little bit untrustworthy or have tr- trust issues with this technology. But equally, I've spoke to a lot of young startups that are completely made up of entire remote teams. So it allows them to pick up the best tech talent from all over the world and have a remote team working together. Is, is that something you're seeing more and more of as well? We do. We actually have uh, quite a few early stage startups that are, that are fully remote and um, if not fully remote, highly distributed with many offices in, in different locations. And, you know, those are the ones that are adopting the technology the fastest because you know, they're, they're making sure that they're thinking about how to stay connected as a company. And, you know, I'll tell you from my experience is that I've managed remote teams the majority of my career. And if you, uh, if you go back in my history, video wasn't a part of my day to day. But, you know, in a world where we are a distributed company, I will tell you that I can't walk by one of our conference room any hour of the day uh, you know, and not have video on with some of our employees communicating with other employees using video. So uh, I do think it is that, that younger, earlier stage startup company that doesn't have to get out of its old legacy systems and old legacy ways. It can create a new path. And therefore, of course, they're adopting the technology to help them do that. And for listeners who have never heard of Meeting Owl, I suppose we'll get everybody up to speed. Can you offer an overview of exactly what it is and what makes it different to other solutions out there? I certainly can. So uh, the Meeting Owl is all about the remote user experience. It's trying to make them feel like they are part of the meeting as opposed to uh, somebody that uh, dialed in and is, is, is watching from afar. So the Meeting Owl is an all-in-one device that acts as a camera, speaker, and microphone, and it's compatible with any of the video conferencing platforms that you may use, whether it's Zoom or Google or Skype. Uh, It's unique in that it sits at the center of the table and essentially becomes the director of the meeting. It takes visual and audio cues from the people in the room to show the speaker to the remote participant as though they were in the room. Uh, If there's more than one person speaking at a time, uh, it splits the screen to show the multiple active speakers to the remote user. 
And it's very easy to use. We talked earlier about that intuitive tech. Uh, it is a USB compatible device, so it is really plug and play. There are no uh, additional drivers or software that you have to download in order to make it work. You just plug it in and it goes. I think it's, a, it's an interesting story about how the company got started. One of the founders uh, took a role as a remote worker and the hardest thing for him was, uh, he's an engineer, so the hardest thing for him was, uh, was the daily stand-ups. And there would be a computer sitting at the end of the room, and it would have be this awkward view, and it would be hard to know when to jump in or not. And then what happened was, uh, you know, one of the, his coworkers uh, in that uh, location where all the employees were uh, put the computer on a stool and started to rotate the stool to the speaker. So the light bulb went off for our founder, and that's how the concept was born. It is a Wi-Fi enabled device, so it allows us to do uh, over-the-air software updates, which is continuing to focus on improving that experience for the remote user. Uh, we have over 20,000 customers, and it currently retails for $799 in the United States. What a great story on how it was founded, though. I love that. You know, coming across the actual pain point and that light bulb moment going off. It's amazing, isn't it? That's right. So what was it that made Our Labs to decide to launch the second version of Meeting Owl, and, and which I believe is now called Meeting Owl Pro? What makes this different and what excites you about the release of the Owl Pro? Yeah, we're, we're very excited about releasing the Meeting Owl Pro, primarily because uh, you know we listened to our customers as we thought about the uh, the evolution of the Meeting Owl brand. And uh, the first thing is, is that it has sharper video and extended audio. So it's uh, twice as sharp and in 1080 resolution as the original Meeting Owl. Uh, and it's also twice as loud. So it's for bigger spaces and it allows for, uh, you know, a, a lot more people to be able to participate because it covers a larger area. And then the most important part of it and why we're so excited is that we're also introducing the smart meeting room. So, you know, I, we talk about the meeting tax and how it takes a long time to get the meeting started. These are things that should be solved through technology. And the smart meeting room is, you know, where we're going. A few of those things that we will be doing, um, one of which you're able to see now on the Meeting Out Pro, which is smart zooming, where it focuses in on the individual who is speaking. Uh, in Q1, we'll be able to release an advanced analytics package as well as fleet management, which gives uh, IT professionals and operators the ability to get more out of their meeting rooms. And then in Q2 of 2020, we'll also be releasing um, an interactive feature where the remote user, uh, when there's work being done on a whiteboard, it'll give them the ability to be interactive with that whiteboard. So picture a scenario where there's someone at the whiteboard, right? Uh, someone at the whiteboard writing as one side of the screen and the other side of the screen is other participants uh, that may be speaking. And then beyond that, you know, we have a lot of more productivity apps that we plan to be releasing throughout 2020. Fantastic. And before you came on today, I did do a little bit of research. And I recently read the 2019 State of Remote Work report, which revealed that full-time remote workers said they're happy in their job, 22% more than people who never work remotely, and that remote workers were more than twice as likely to earn more than £100,000 a year. I mean, can you expand on uh, everything in that report? And was there anything else that particularly surprised you or will surprise people listening? I think that probably the biggest thing I took away from that, that annual report was that um, remote work isn't, isn't something that's coming into the future, right? It's not a trend that's going to start picking up speed. You know, it's, you know, with electric cars, you're waiting for electric cars to be here, but, you know, it's a slow roll to get mm -hmm. there. But with remote work, you know, it's, it's not a trend, it's here. So if you look at the state of remote work, it, it shows the, of the people that we surveyed, roughly two thirds of them responded that they, they are working remotely at least part of the time. And that ranges from executives to individual contributors, um, to people that are managing teams, to people that are participating uh, in meetings on a daily basis. So it is cut across the entire workforce and, you know, I, I think that you can see that it is, uh, it is something that is both here and is becoming a much bigger uh, part of, uh, you know, how businesses run on a day-to-day -day basis. I think that 
the days of the three hour commute are slowly going away to where you can actually get productivity out of those three hours. I mean, you know, think about the, um, think about the fact that, you know, with the meeting owl, you can have a meeting, which is a very interactive experience and include all of your participants voices in it, as opposed to taking two days out of the office to fly across the country. Yeah. So, you know, that's where we're going, not only in terms of how we interact in the office and how we, uh, you know, do face to face meetings, but, uh, you know, also how we think about, you know, remote employees being a much bigger part of our day to day life. And you did say at the beginning, you work with so many of the world's biggest brands. I'm curious, without obviously mentioning any names, what kind of feedback have you received from some of these brands? The feedback is fantastic. So you can actually go see some of our feedback. You know, we are, uh, we're, we sell on the Amazon platform uh, for one. So that's been uh, great feedback. And you just see a lot of the same um, uh, type of words that, you know, give you great feeling that there's customer love, easy to use, intuitive, as advertised. Those are, those are common themes that you see. And, um, you know, we also see a tremendous amount of repeat buying. So I, I like I liken it to those you know social videos that you see when you know the, the the baby puts on the glasses and sees its its mother for the first time and its eyes open really big and get excited. So I think what happens is is that companies buy one of these and then other people that are invited to meetings using the owl see a dramatic difference in how they're able to participate remotely and then they 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 want to get on board as well. So we so we see a lot of expansion within our uh, within our customer base that we're very excited about we take as a very positive sign. Well, I love what you said a few moments ago, how remote working is not a thing of the future. It is actually here right now. But both you and I are men of certain age where saying the year 2020 almost feels a little bit wrong. So I've got to ask though, what's going to be your primary focus in 2020 for our labs? And, and you know, what, what excites you about the 12 months ahead? Yeah, and I agree with you on your point. I, I think about um, I think 1990 was about eight years ago. So <laughs> the, the fact that it as of next year it'll be 30 years ago is is uh, uh, shocking and scary all at the same time. Uh, so for us, you know, we are a um, we're a company that is continuing to evolve, and we are uh, hiring a significant amount of uh, engineers to keep up with customer demand. And also uh, really start to focus, you know, beyond just being a camera speaker microphone that brings a differentiated experience, but, you know, just making meetings better, making meetings more productive, making uh, employees, remote employees more productive. So, you know, we will be looking to add to that productivity suite as we go through 2020, as we shift our focus uh, to roll out more software products. Excellent. And for anybody listening that wants to find out more information or even contact a member of your team, if they want to carry on this conversation we started today, what's the best way of doing that? Yeah. So you can go to owllabs.com. So uh, on that, you will get interactive videos that show the experience. Uh, you can also download any of our free research. Uh, our product is also available on the Amazon platform throughout Europe and the United States. And if anyone has any questions following this podcast, they can always reach out to me directly at frank at owllabs.com. Fantastic. Well, I'll add all those links to the show notes and the blog post that will accompany this podcast episode. And something I always say at the end of every episode is technology works best when it brings people together and solving real problems. And technology, almost everywhere we look now, is removing friction points. And if we look at the humble meeting room and the trip to work, we've all done the three-hour commute. We've all had the meeting room from hell where you've got 10 minutes with a packed room and trying to get everything to work. And you guys are solving all that but also equally paving the way for the future of remote work, which is a fantastic thing. So a huge thank you for coming on and sharing that story with me today. Thanks, Frank. Thanks for having me, Neil. Since remote work is becoming the new normal, one recent study found that 56% of companies worldwide already allow remote work. That the 56% of companies worldwide already allowing remote work are hybrid companies or are a fully remote company. So a huge thank you to Frank for talking about the increase in employees working remotely, including the technology needed, how it will work, and why employees deserve the autonomy to choose where they work. And of course, walking me through how to get the most out of the hour meeting. 
So I'll pop a video on YouTube and a on the blog post for this episode over on my site, techblogwriter.co.uk. Just look in the podcast section to find today's conversation with links and videos, etc., so you can see exactly what it looks like and how it works. And I'm also interested in what you took away from today's conversation. And is there room for an hour meeting in your conference room? And if not, why not? Whatever it is that you took away today, email me, techblogwriter at outlook.com, tweet me at Neil C. Hughes. And while I'm waiting for your correspondence, I'm going to go make myself a drink. <laughs> so I'll see you all again tomorrow, bright and early. But a big thank you for listening. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thank you for listening to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast with Neil C. Hughes. Remember, technology works best when it brings people together.